Tonight, we go inside the confessions of America's deadliest serial killer and why a local prosecutor says Samuel Little strangled all of his victims. Yeah, that includes some right here in Northeast Ohio. Investigator Sarah Goldenberg has a look inside Cuyahoga County's case files in episode two to catch a killer, Samuel Little. Where we left you, Samuel Little has just been convicted of killing three women in Los Angeles, and his days of going unnoticed are over. A Texas Ranger cracks the next step of the case, ending up with dozens of confessions. A warning what you are about to hear may be disturbing. February 1994, Odessa, Texas. Denise Christie Brothers was working as a prostitute and vanished. Her body found outside of this barn a month later. 19 News got a hold of these crime scene photos from the Ector County District Attorney's Office. I always feel like justice can be delayed, uh, but it doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be denied. But in the spring of 2018, Texas Ranger James Holland realized Samuel Little had been in West Texas at the time of Denise's murder. A few years earlier, LAPD asked the FBI's Violent Criminal Apprehension Program for a full profile on Little, and they found an alarming pattern, including one unsolved murder in Odessa. So Holland flew to California State Prison, meeting Little face to face, where he eventually confessed to Denise's death. That wasn't the end of it. The Texas Ranger spent more than 700 hours with Little. During that time, he confessed to 93 murders in 19 states, spanning 1970 to 2005. And he started drawing his victims from memory. Seven of those victims were from Ohio, three killed in Cleveland. Special Investigations Chief Rick Bell and Investigator Jack Bornfeld, both with the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office, wanted to hear the confessions for themselves. Can I show you something? Yeah. Remember who this handsome devil is? Yeah. Oh, no, oh, who is it, me? That's you, 1966. Little is not as young and powerful as he once was. His wheelchair sits in the corner of the room. He was willing to talk to investigators and he was looking forward to meeting us from Cleveland because he had been here from Cleveland and he wanted to talk about the Cleveland Browns. First, they questioned Little about 21-year-old Mary Jo Payton, found murdered in 1984 on the east side of Cleveland. Does she look familiar to you at all? Yeah, this is her. That's her? You know, we made a date and then she got in and she, she didn't want why she had me over there where he was found at. They headed to East 105th and Euclid. It was a factory. Yeah. yeah. That she pulled, we pulled by. It was vacant though. It wasn't open. It wasn't running. I threw her down the. Uh, when we got over there, we did our thing and uh, choked her out. And then uh, took a body in, in uh, the car park right next to the stairway. One day, a worker noticed a foul smell and found a woman's body in a stairwell at Madison Equipment Company. She was decomposed and naked from the waist down. Prosecutors kept pressing Little for details, making sure his confession was accurate. I will show you some photos, see if it ring a bell with you, all right? Hey. Does this look familiar to you? The stairwell's over here. Yeah, the car was over here too. My car was over there. Mary Jo's body wasn't discovered for at least two months after she died, and the medical examiner couldn't identify her. The cause of death ruled undetermined. So it did not go into the homicide files. It went into a separate cabinet called undetermined murders, and that one was difficult to find. Police put out this reconstruction of her face in the plane dealer. It wasn't until 1992 when a fingerprint scan by the FBI ID'd her as Mary Jo Payton. Next, prosecutors pull out this photo, 32-year-old Rose Evans. This one is later on, in around 91, 92. Remember some young lady you dumped? Uh, in, in the tires. With the tires? Oh, yes, sir. Well, yeah, you mm -hmm. tell us, okay? See oh, oh, God, yeah. Uh, what do you think of that, sir? <clears throat> what do you remember about her? The eyes and that face. Rose was married, originally from Pennsylvania. Someone walking on East 36th Street in Cleveland found her body in a vacant lot, lying face down with two large truck tires over her. You had to have been there to know about what happened. None of this was in 
the public knowledge. Rose had been dragged 50 feet from the street to the field. She was wearing this blue shirt, her pants and shoes found soaked with blood. She had been strangled. Rose Evans did not wish to get in the back of the van with him. And she kept saying, you're gonna kill me, you're gonna kill me. Little revealed to investigators, he has an obsession with women's necks. Depends on how a neck look. You know how a man got an ugly Adam's apple. Yeah, you got an Adam's apple. Man do that, but right. a woman got a smooth. So you pick them out by the way that their neck looks, because if the neck looks good, then it might be somebody that you want to have sex with or somebody that you might want to kill. What, what's the what's the thought? Both. Both. Little explains how he chose his victims. Long as you didn't get in around out there with the people that would be immediately missed yeah. and very important to either family or business or somebody. Yeah, you got pretty good at knowing which ones. But Mary Jo and Rose aren't Little's only victims from Cleveland. Little confessed to killing this unidentified woman in 1978. Her body found in 1983 in Willoughby Hills off of a highway. I think about it all the time. That's why I remember because I think about it all the time. <laughs> Who is the third victim from Cleveland, and how will investigators identify her? Plus, a 1991 murder in Akron finally solved. For him, killing in different cities was easy because he was a parasite on another woman who would drive him around the country as she stole from department stores. And find out more about a woman who may have covered up evidence from Samuel Little's murders. I'm Sarah Goldenberg. That's next on the third and final chapter of To Catch a Killer, Samuel Little. And that third episode airs tomorrow night on 19 News and CW43. If you want to watch tonight's or last night's episodes again, we've posted the entire series online. It's on our app and on our streaming platforms. Now your 19 first alert.